Hello friends, welcome back to A 40k Journey. My name is Nate, Face Reveal, and today I wanted to share with you a little bit of advice that I wish someone had given me when I started in the hobby. So I have been into modeling since I was a kid, and I got into Warhammer 40,000 when I was 15. So I'm 39 now, so I spent a long time. Um, I don't know exactly how long, however old my niece is, because I remember painting some of my first Space Marines the night she was born. Um, but it, it's been a long time, and I've learned a lot of lessons, and I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way. Uh, I got into 40K near the end of second edition. Uh, to give you a little context, in case you're watching this a long time in the future, it is currently a ninth edition. <laughs> So it's undergone a lot of changes, um, and I have too. And part of the reason I am doing this 40K journey is to document some of the changes uh, I've made and some of the lessons I've learned. But anyway, I want to impart some wisdom to you so you can avoid some of the mistakes I have made. <laughs> Save yourself some time, some effort, and some money. Uh, number one, start small with paints. Um, I took a hiatus from 40k a few years ago and I got back into it about a year and a half ago and I went paint crazy. Like I got way the hell more paints than I needed. And the truth is if you're just getting started you don't need that many paints. Like five or six should do you perfectly well and both uh, Games Workshop and several other companies sell starter paint sets or paint sets that are designed for specific things like if you know you're going to be painting ultramarines or necrons Games Workshop has two sets specifically designed to paint those things. Uh, Vallejo has a bunch of different sets geared towards specific military subjects so if you're looking to paint like World War II German tanks or World War II uh, American aircraft, there are paint sets specifically designed for those. But the point is you don't need to go out and drop you know, several hundred dollars on like the complete paint set. It's completely unnecessary, especially for companies like Games Workshop, which have gigantic paint lines. And don't get me wrong, I like Citadel paints and I have more than a few right behind me. See, <laughs> uh, I, I like Citadel paints, but I'll be the first one to tell you, you don't need all of them. So uh, speaking of paints, uh, don't do what I did and start your painting journey with craft paints. Uh, yes, you can get craft paints very cheaply at uh, like Michael's and like, by volume, you know, volume of paint to dollars spent, they're a great deal. But we can't just look at that in terms of money and volume. You know, there is a quality issue to be considered. Now, don't get me wrong. You absolutely can paint uh, miniatures with craft paints. I did it for years. The problem is their coverage is not typically very good. Uh, just the way they're designed, the things they're designed to do. So whereas a Citadel paint might, you know, give you a nice even coat um, in say like two or three layers, it might take a craft paint six, eight, or even ten layers to do the same job. And I think that is kind of setting you up for if not failure, frustration. You know, yes, you can paint miniatures with craft paints, but it's gonna take a long time to get it up to where it needs to be. And for my money, you might as well just save a little bit and buy a specific miniature paint. It's gonna save you a lot of time and trouble. So, uh, number three. Use a wet palette. This is something I only started doing recently and something that, to my knowledge, didn't even exist when I started. Or if it did, I had never heard of it. But this was also in like the early-ish days of the internet. YouTube didn't exist. And if you wanted to learn how to paint, you had to find like a book or a magazine or someone who already knew what they were doing. And sometimes only one or two of those things, or even none of those things might be available. But a wet palette is something that helps 
keep your paint viable for longer. And yeah, you can just slap some paint down on a dry palette, you know, no, any, any palette, you know, plastic or metal ceramic will do. If you really want, you could make a dry palette out of a smooth uh, glazed ceramic tile that you can get at the hardware store for a buck. But wet palettes keep your paint viable longer and kind of help pre-thin your paints so it goes on much smoother. And yes, there are tons of wet palette offerings. Um, I've never tried one, but you know, if you happen to be a wet palette company employee and are looking for someone to review a product, be happy to. But uh, you can also make one for next to nothing. Um, I made this wet palette, there's a video on it earlier in the channel, uh, with a tray from some Inari Zushi that I got at Wajimaya, a paper towel, and a strip of parchment paper. So basically fold the paper towel so it fits into your container, um, add the piece of parchment paper on it, and then add water until it's just covered. And I actually got myself a couple of these squirt bottles, which are really handy dandy for re-wetting the, re the wet palette. Uh, it can really help just save time, make things easier. But wet palettes, I mean, don't take my word for it. Get one or make one, try it and see the difference. Uh, number four, thin your paints. Uh, even good quality miniature paints sometimes are chalky, like just the nature of making white paint. The pigments come out kind of chalky, you know, kind of chunky. Uh, and that's really not a good look, especially if you're painting something with uh, smooth surfaces that's white. So for example, like White Scar Space Marines have pure white armor. <laughs> Um, trying to paint that with an unthin paint is going to be a nightmare. And really, painting white scars even with thin paint may still be a white a nightmare. I would use like a, a rattle can or an airbrush for that. Or um, use a, like a really, really, really light gray, like um, Vallejo Model Air uh, white gray, or like Citadel's Yolthwan gray. Uh, base with that, uh, it'll give you much better coverage, and then you can just use white to highlight that. But thinning your paints will give you a much smoother layer. And when I was a kid starting out, I was painting Deathwing Terminators, and I did not thin my paints, because no one had told me to, and I didn't know I needed to. And my models looked super chunky, because they had just clumps of paint on them and at the time I thought oh it's cool they look like they're made out of stone no no younger me they just look bad so thin your paints whether it's with water or thinner medium or like Lamian medium or contrast medium there's a bunch of different things you can thin your paints with but very few paints can be used straight out of the bottle and of course there are exceptions like the Bayhill Airline um, I painted uh, 135 scale tanks with those, paint it right out of the bottle. It's already pre-thinned, works pretty well. I wouldn't use it for all applications, but um, number five, don't be afraid of mixing your paints. I spent a very long time and a lot of money buying a gajillion different paints because I had this idea that I deplored mixing paints. I don't really know why in retrospect, just that I did. And I've come to realize that's kind of stupid. Like, if you had a separate bottle of paint for every single, like, hue and shade uh, you put on a model, you would have, you know, a shelf two miles high jammed with paints. It would be totally impractical when you could just add a little bit of white or a little bit of yellow or, you know, a little bit of purple or whatever to your color to slightly change it to where it needs to be. So don't be afraid of mixing your paints. This is especially true if, like me, you kind of like the studio schemes. Uh, the Games Workshop Studio, formerly called the Evy Metal Team, uh, I've always loved their work, but it has recently come to my attention and, you know, it, it may seem kind of obvious, but, you know, 
Um, a lot of their schemes involve heavily mixed paint. Uh, involve like glazing, mixing multiple different colors, you know, they mix paint. And if the pros mix paint, you should at least try mixing paint. You know, paints are different. So depending on what you have, your results may vary. So experiment, try out a little bit, see how they work. But bottom line, don't be afraid of mixing your paints. Uh, number six, sprue goo. This is super useful. It involves uh, garbage, basically. So when you build a Warhammer model, whether it's Age of Sigmar or 40k, Kill Team, doesn't matter, you get sprue. That's the plastic, you know, uh, rectangles that the parts come on. And what you can do is take some of that sprue that you would otherwise just throw away and put it into a bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Give it a few hours and you will get sprue goo. This is super awesome. Not only is it an adhesive and it'll, you know, bond two parts together, it can also act as a gap filler. So rather than having an ugly fissure running down your model, you can just run some sprue goo in it, sand it down, shave it down with your hobby knife, and there you go, like it was never there. Uh, it is super awesome. Um, I don't know if there is a specific like ratio or formula. Uh, what I have noticed is that when you start getting ribbons, uh, you know, thin little streams of gray goo, when you uh, use your sprue goo, then it's time to add a little bit more of the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. So, and if it's really runny, then add a little bit more sprue, give it a few hours to dissolve into the sprue goo. But bottom line, it is super useful. I wish I'd known about it years and years and years ago. So, and Tamiya Extra Thin Cement is not hard to find. You can get it in dozens of places online. Um, I usually get it through like Scale Hobbyist or eBay. So plenty of places. Um, number seven, don't start with show pieces. And believe me, I get the urge to want to grab some really cool show pieces like big monster models or big tanks or you know, big uh, hero HQ models. They look fan freaking tastic. But if you are just starting out, or even if you're not just starting out, but you're trying some new, you know, paint lines, like maybe you're trying to get into using Army Painter instead of Citadel, or vice versa, or whatever. Or if you are trying new, some new techniques, like if you want to try, I don't know, wet blending or glazing or non metallic metals don't try it on your really big, really expensive showpiece. You know, try it out on some little garbage mini that you 3D print. Or if you have a, a local games workshop store, they run a free miniature every month. All you need to do is ask, you know, get that and experiment on that. Don't do it on your showpiece. Trust me when I say you're probably going to regret it. But that leads us to our last point, number eight. Nothing is permanent on your model unless you want it to be. You've probably heard me say this in previous videos, and it really is true. If you are not happy with the way a model turns out after you paint it, strip the paint off and paint it again. You can do that a lot of times before maybe, you know, some of the solvents you've used maybe dissolve some of the detail or whatever. I, I don't do it terribly often myself, but I know it is certainly possible. And if you have just like a thin layer of paint, then just paint over it. But, you know, you don't have to settle with your paint job. You can have the paint job you wanted. It may take time, probably will take time. Uh, it'll take practice, may involve more than a little frustration, but it's not permanent unless you want it to be. So don't be afraid of stripping down models and starting again. Don't feel like you have to get a whole new model and start from the ground up. You don't. So 
those are a few pieces of advice I wish someone had told me when I was first starting. I hope this has been helpful to you. And if you would like more videos like this, please let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate your feedback. So thank you once again for joining me on this next step in a 40K journey. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and consider supporting the channel on Patreon.